everyone. My name is Andy Huang, the incoming chairman for Hawaii Restaurant Association and vice president and chief operating officer for LNL Hawaiian Barbecue. Mahalo for joining me here on Reshan of Hawaii on the Think Tech platform while Cheryl is away. It has been almost three months since the, our Maui Ohana has been devastated by the Lahaina wildfires. Thousands were displaced from their homes, businesses were destroyed, and many lost their lives. Specifically for our food industry workers, how can they receive financial assistance from grants? The support from the Hawaii community and all over the nation has been overwhelming. However, the recovery effort is a marathon, not a sprint. The supports continue to ask how and what can they do to help? The number one answer has been money. Joining us today for this special conversation, the Giving Kitchen. This amazing group provides financial assistance to those facing hardship, particularly in food service industry. Today, they will share with us how they provide help and explain their easy application process. I would like to welcome our guests today. We have Leah and Sean. So please introduce yourself. Mahalo, Andy. Aloha. I'm Leah Melnick, Senior Director of Field Operations for Giving Kitchen. Aloha. My name is Sean Pelani. I am the Director of Partnerships and Outreach for Giving Kitchen. So, hi, and Leah. So, you know, can you share about us how and who, who is Giving Kitchen? Absolutely. Giving Kitchen is a nonprofit organization that helps food service workers in crisis. When we talk about food service workers, we're referring to anyone that works in a restaurant, food truck, catering, concessions, uh, bar, tap room, or even cafeteria, like inside of a school or hospital where food service is taking place. Um, we do that by offering a couple of different programs, such as a financial assistance program, as well as a stability network program for when they find themselves in crisis. Um, for financial assistance, we have an eligibility and criteria to be eligible for that financial assistance based on whether or not you've experienced illness, injury, death in your immediate family, or disaster like flood or fire, um, as recently happened in Maui. Um, and our stability network is encompassed of several community resources across the entire country, including in Hawaii, um, where we're able to connect folks to find free and discounted services, whether they're in need of things such as, um, you know, mental health or substance abuse or recovery or food or things outside of what you might seek with our financial assistance program. This is amazing. And, you know, um, how did this uh, organization create it? Like, you know, who, who founded, founded the, the organization? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so Giving Kitchen uh, was founded, uh, got our 501c3 in 2013. Uh, back in late 2012, there was a local chef here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we are headquartered, um, that was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, I'm sorry, it was gallbladder cancer. When that happened, he and his wife uh, were trying to figure out what to do to make ends meet. He had been a chef at several different restaurants across Atlanta. And so many of the different restaurants that knew about what he was going through all came together. As so many of us in the restaurant industry do, when someone's in crisis, we pass the hat, we figure out how we can support one of our own. Uh, they got together and they threw a big party and decided that all of the proceeds from that party would be pulled together to help Ryan Heidinger through his cancer diagnosis. Um, in one night, trying to raise about 20 to 30,000 to help them through that treatment, they raised nearly 300,000 in wow. one night. So when the community came together for Ryan, um, it was really apparent that um, not only are there more people like Ryan, um, in the food service industry who are going to find themselves in times of crisis where they need support, but that the community is here and ready to support them. So Giving Kitchen um, really started out of uh, the crisis of Ryan Heidinger. It started with the fight for one person, and now it's the fight for many uh, across the nation. His wife, Jen Heidinger Kendrick, is now, um, I, she's our founder. She is still our spokesperson here. Um, we're an organization that started serving food service workers here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we're based. And it's slowly grown uh, to the point now where we are serving any food service worker across the United States. 
Well, no, this is amazing. How has it grown from since 2012 to now? Like it's only 10 years. It's not, it's not super long, right? You know, it's long enough, but super long, but how it grew to today's um, size. That's, that's amazing. And, and Sean, could you please tell us, our viewers, you know, where is the Giving Kitchen based out of and how is it funded? Sure. So we're based out of Atlanta. We've got three different resources where we get our funding from uh, fundraisers, private donors, as well as running um, corporate sponsorships. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and how, how can people apply to and what kind of documentation do they need? Yeah. So if they're sick, they just need a doctor's note and proof of um, employment. If it's a death in the family, we would just need a death certificate. Um, and, you know, it's, it's all based on their needs. Oh, cool. It's a very simple process to ask for help. That, that's very nice. Yeah. Sometimes when you're in, uh, um, you know, serious trouble and you don't know what to do. And, you know, if you have to provide a lot of documentation, um, it, it delays, you know, all the all the support, right, they can receive. And, and Leah, you know, can you tell us about a little bit about your background and how how would you know how were you, you were led to part of the giving kitchen oh my favorite story of course um I, I i come from the industry as well and at the time um i was helping to run a barbecue restaurant here in atlanta uh, one of our chefs um actually our executive chef at the time was diagnosed with breast cancer and this was around the same time as ryan heidinger of giving kitchen got his diagnosis um, so what we were doing as a barbecue restaurant was that we were trying to do what we could to raise money for our own teammate, and we were throwing our own fundraiser to support her through her fight, um, and we were just doing that as one restaurant. As we pulled together and through our event, um, it happened to be the week after Team Heidi was planned for. Um, Jen and Ryan, um, after their event, showed up to our fundraiser. Um, and got on stage and announced for the very first time that they were going to create Giving Kitchen and that they were donating to our chef that had gone through her own diagnosis. Um, back before that, uh, once I graduated from college, um, I had worked in nonprofits. I became an AmeriCorps member and I was working for Hands On Network that merged with Points of Light back in uh, 2008. Um, once so I have a background in nonprofits. I'd worked in the industry. And when I heard that not only was there a nonprofit being created, but it was one being created to help the people that I work with in my own industry, it just felt like the most perfect marriage of what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I ran right up to them, asked them what they had available, how I could volunteer and how I could help them get this organization started. Um, they immediately let me get involved, um, finding things to do outside of working and running the barbecue restaurant until I just got to a point where um, I had kind of developed myself into a position here at Giving Kitchen, and I've been here ever since. Oh, so what a what a story! That that's in inspirational, yeah. And and how about Sean? Like, you know, how did you get into the industry and 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 with Giving Kitchen? So I got into the industry when I was 15 years old, back home in Connecticut. We went to go visit my friend at a local diner, and he had to give us notice because it was travel baseball season coming up. His boss turned to him and said, well, you better find me somebody. I pulled out my friend's apron string, pointed to myself. He introduced me to his boss, worked for that gentleman for three years. It was some of the best years of my life. Um, I got involved with Giving Kitchen over 10 years ago when I was running restaurants here in the city. One of my employees... Uh, was hit from behind in her Jeep and it rolled a couple times. And so she was going to be out for a bit. Um, I had heard about Giving Kitchen through press media, um, but it was a little busy getting the restaurant up and running. But somebody had reached out on our behalf and submitted a claim for her. They reached out. They took such amazing care for her. A couple of months later, they had reached out asking if they can do an interview with her in our restaurant for their press kit. Uh, so, of course, we obliged and got to know the team and met some wonderful people such as Jen and Naomi at the time and pulled Naomi aside and just asked her how we as a restaurant group can get involved and how I can get involved as an individual. And she mentioned volunteer opportunities. So I started volunteering uh, 10 years ago. And my first volunteer gig was at uh, Pop-Up Talk where we provided, or they provided at the time, free medical care for food service workers. And I was just in awe of what they did and how well 
it was managed and how much they really genuinely cared about the care that was being received by those food service workers and the resources that were also available then. And I just knew right in there and then this is gonna become my second family. I'm gonna do whatever I can to promote them and get involved. And then this past March at Team Heidi, the executive director pulled me aside and said, we need to talk. Uh, we'd like to have you over on this side rather than this side. And I uh, thought he was sort of kidding, but I was sort of glad to hear that. Um, but I did love my job as a consultant, um, but made the decision to come over and I couldn't be happier. Cool, yeah. And so, you know, uh, how about how about um, any Hawaii, have you received any application from Hawaii? Um, we know? have, we have, we received quite a few. We have several connections in Maui from with chefs who were from Atlanta originally. And I was put in cont contact with one of them through a mutual friend and he reached out and I made sure that he shared the information with his contacts, with the people that were out there that he knew personally. And, and you, like uh, during our uh, pr uh, private conversation earlier, you mentioned that you actually, you know, open restaurants in Hawaii. So you have a little uh, history of Hawaii. And if you can, you know, tell us what kind of a uh, connection that you have with Hawaii. Sure, yeah. So I was uh, asked to go out there and open up the Dave & Buster's in Ala Moana in 2000. And uh, I was there in 2001. The hardest thing I ever did in my life was ever leave Hawaii. I didn't want to. Um, I wasn't forced, but my boss and I had a great working relationship and he was being sent to Colorado. So I left March 5th, May 15th. It was 82 degrees. And I landed in Colorado, snowing 41 degrees in board shops, four shorts, flip flops, and a tank top. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I miss the island very much. I still keep in contact with all my friends um, and I hopefully will be out there very soon. So how about Leah, you have any um, story to share? Um, honestly, it's just how much we wanna be sure that food service workers in Hawaii, especially in Maui right now, know how to access us. We have um, a place on our website. It's our Ask for Help form. It's available in English and in Spanish and um, people can ask for help at any time 24 seven by filling out that form. It's at www.givingkitchen.org backslash help or in Spanish backslash ayuda. Um, once that comes into our system, they will be able to be processed by our call center. And if they're going through financial assistance, they'll be able to work with a case manager to go through our application process if they have any questions to make it as easy as possible. Um, otherwise, they'll get connected to a case manager for stability network, or if it makes more sense to let them navigate the stability network library on their own, they'll receive access to that as well. Um, we try to be as open and available as possible. And our single um, most important mission and priority is just to be sure that food service workers everywhere know about us and can overcome the pride to ask for help when they need it. There's a lot of crisis and um, there's no reason anyone should have to struggle more to make ends meet. Um, our coverage comes in the form of payments of your living expenses. So it's just one less burden you have to worry about to have your rent covered, to have your mortgage covered, to have your basic utilities covered when you're unable to work because you're going through something like this is the very least we can do to help you avoid that downward spiral towards homelessness or eviction or other things that result from going through a small crisis. We just know in our industry that when you don't work, you don't get paid most times. And so it's really important to us to make sure that all of those resources are in place and that our industry has access to them like so many other industries already have them ingrained naturally. So is there any uh, restrictions uh, as far as the qualifications and uh, what? how do you vet people and how do you qualify people? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, on the application itself, um, all we ask is for a copy of a paycheck to verify that you work in food service. Um, our team of case managers is able to work with you if you don't have access to specific documentation that's required. Um, for the qualifying criteria for financial assistance, um, as Sean was noting to earlier, illness or injury, a doctor's note is perfect. Um, with, you know, uh, amount of recovery or definitely a diagnosis included in there. Um, death of an immediate family member, death certificate, funeral invoice, obituary, or different types of documents that can help and support that. 
Um, and with flood or fire, which I know is most relevant in Maui right now, um, we look for some sort of incident report or official documentation that can verify that you lived at the address that had that damage um, so that we can work to figure out how we can pay to cover living expenses for you. Is it covering rent or mortgage while repairs are being done? Is it helping to pay for living expenses because you're staying somewhere else while some of that repair work is being done? Or are you going to move completely and you need help with a deposit or first month's rent? after going through the crisis that you've been through. So um, what's great is our case managers can work with each, per each person to figure out if you have one of those four qualifying crises, how to fit you in that box, how to make sure you're getting the right documentation possible to get the help that you need. Um, surprise, this cat- Yeah, we got a visitor. Um, but for our stability network program, we do not require any documentation whatsoever. Uh, we simply, if you ask for help, our resources are available to you. That's amazing. No, that's also another uh, question I was going to ask is like, you know, um, most of our, uh, you know, Maui residents who's in the disaster, uh, the house were burned down, you know, and a lot of times, a lot of them don't even have access to the internet, the power, you know, so to get help, it's, it's very, it's going to be very difficult. And then how would they uh how would they receive the help like how do they receive the money and how the money what's the process that's a great question um for the financial assistance program we generally will send um checks written out to the providers and we will mail them to the address that's provided on the application by the person filling it out so whether or not that's the home address or it's a uh, temporary address where they're staying, our case managers will work that out with them. The checks are made out to the providers so they can simply use them to pay whatever is needed, whether it be rent for the home that they were living in previously, or whether it be rent or a mortgage for a new place that they might be moving into because of the crisis that happened. And same with the utilities. We mail those to them and they would send them out to the utility companies or take them in however they usually pay them. Yeah, so I mean, since you guys have been around for over 10 years, I think, and you must have seen many different disasters, right? And what are some of the, uh, the other challenges or maybe that, you know, our viewers don't know or don't understand that, you know, what can they do to help those uh, in need and get the message to them? Uh, any example or any experience that you can share? Um, you know, Sean or, or Leah, either one. Yeah, I mean, it's just really spreading the word. You know, if somebody's been helped, you know, with through Giving Kitchen, you know, asking them to spread the word, um, somebody can actually refer somebody because they've heard of us. And this is really is just getting the word out. And I think Leah mentioned before, our main goal is to make sure that every single food service worker across the United States knows that there's somebody there, there's a group or an organization available to them to take some burden off their shoulders during time of need. And, and how can our viewers help? and support the, your program yeah i mean they can visit the Ki giving kitchen website w, you know www.givingkitchen.org uh there's a donate button where you know we're always open to receiving donations and most grateful for those um and again spreading the word mm. you know they can Thank host you. they can host private dinners and and donate the money there there's a lot of ways they can do it they can get you know they can have them reach out to us we're more than happy to walk them through it do you have any um uh, recipient story that you can share in, you know, maybe Maui, if you do have one or somewhere else that, that, that help, you know, what, do you have any uh, stories? Like the one I shared earlier, my very first employee who was hit from behind in her Jeep and rolled it four times. She was out of work for four months and received rent and utility assistance during that time. And that was a big burden off of her shoulder. So she was able to be well and recuperate and just focus on her healing to get back to work healthy. Wow, thank you so much. So, you know, um, we're coming close to the end of the show. Um, Leah, do you have anything to add our viewers or any other thoughts, comments? Just so much gratitude for you and everyone with the Hawaiian Restaurant Association as a whole. Uh, partnering together with organizations like yours or anyone else listening in who would like to partner with Giving Kitchen. We would love to work with you to figure out how to get the word out better, to make sure that food service workers know about Giving Kitchen, to make sure food service workers feel comfortable asking for help about Giving Kitchen, um, and to make sure that we're getting to know what crisis looks like in 
all of Hawaii so that we are addressing those needs as best as possible. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Andy, I Thank think you we should so point much, out John, to, yeah. anything, what? I'm sorry, what? I think we should point out that there's no cost to ask for help. There's no repayment once they receive a grant. It's, 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 that's what it is, it's a grant. Amazing. Yeah. So, what would uh, what are the typical size of the the, the uh, individual can receive, and how long can they uh, receive the help? Um, so, basically, um, they are eligible to receive assistance up to a maximum of two months worth of assistance. Uh, we don't have a monetary cap. We measure it based on length of time, um, and we feel like you know once you have eight weeks to figure out what to do next to have that coverage of your living expenses it gives you an adequate amount of time to figure out what that next step is or whether or not there's more help you need that you can also access through the stability network platform that we have um, as far as the amounts of the awards right now they're at an average of around 1800 per person but the average amount of time you know the amount of time that each food service worker needs to be out of work or needs that assistance definitely definitely varies depending on the type of circumstance that they're going through. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for you both, Sean and, and Leah, for sharing and, and giving our Maui community a, a, a little more extra hope. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, mahalo for having us. Yeah, mahalo. Mahalo, thank you. Yeah, for closing, um, the Hawaii Restaurant Association is an organization unifying representing and supporting the Hawaii restaurant and food service industry. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.